30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. We kick things off and we got markets in positive territory this morning. Quite a weekend in politics. I'm sure everyone's heard the story out there. Biden dropping out. Whole new ball game, man. Uh, Trump still in the lead for sure. We'll go over some of those betting markets as, yeah, the Trump trade. Everything prices into a market when you have a presidential election just uh, more than three months out. The one thing that's remarkable is it's going to be an election like none other. It already has been, and it's coming down the line. You know, Europe, many other countries, the election season is not so long. It's one of the things that's actually unfortunate in America, right? Elections, I mean, the election almost starts right after it ends, right? As in one election ends, everybody else lines up. We're going to get an election in just over three months right now, and uh, we're going to see it unfold, and we're going to see how the markets react as well, and today kicks it off. We'll see what happens. S&Ps, though, we're up by six-tenths percent. You see the markets here. S&Ps up by 34 points, 55.87. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 2.12. 19,926. We get the Dow this morning up about 51 points, barely in the green by about one tenth percent, 40,613 in the Russell, up by seven, a third of the percent. Bitcoin, quite an acceleration for Bitcoin on Friday. We hold on to those gains. We're up by $530 right now. 68,000 is the handle for Bitcoin, 68,010. Crude continuing to drop, quite the drop on Friday. We got a 77 handle. If you haven't filled up your gas tank, maybe hold on for a day or two if you can, as we got some lower prices coming at you with crude trading off 74 pennies at 77.91 this morning. You jump over to gold, gold basically flat. There's your daily. You did break above that 24.50 area. We make all time highs last week at 24.88. We trade a little bit lower from that price level, and we are trading at 2400 on the dot as I speak. Back to a five-minute chart for gold. You see the dive overnight coming into 8:30. We were at about 23.90. We're trading at 2400 on the gold contract. You jump to notes and bonds right now. We got the 10-year. We're positive by three ticks right now. Trading at 110.30. You're talking about a 10-year yield of about 4.22. About 4.22 percent. The yield on the 10-year. The 30-year. Up by 14 ticks, 119.18 right now. You jump over to the dollar index, DXY. A little bit of dollar, well, I guess basically flat, but we've gotten a little bit of a pop from where we were overnight. We were approaching the 104 price level. We're back at about 104.35, basically flat from where we were at the close of action on Friday. Quite a spike on the VIX last week. Got our first spike we've seen in a while. We're remaining at some of those elevated levels. VIX up to 17.19 with the sell-off on Friday. We're trading at 16.12. You take a look at the daily, which is where that bar that you're talking about comes from. And that was kind of the trend line that we were dealing with at the beginning of the year. You have the market selling off. You have the VIX spiking. We got a spike all the way to 21 when we were back there in April. And just for some correlation, remember what the market was doing back then, right? Come on, catch up. Yeah. Where are we? Yeah, there is your April sell-off that got us into that VIX area. And then you trade from 4900 up to 5721 So you talk about it, man. You back over to the VIX. And since then, just been chopping around between about 12 and 14. We did get back to a high of 17 and change on the VIX. We're trading at 16, 13 right now on that VIX. All right. So Biden bows out. Cable news gets a gift and a half of obviously uh couldn't help but tune in to some of the analysis yesterday he endorses harris you had some other prominent democrats coming out endorsing harris you had the clintons coming out endorsing harris you had to think that they tried to have some type of a plan when he steps down in terms of what he wanted there to avoid the disarray to some degree and we'll see what happens in terms of where we go now what matters most where's the money money don't lie all right well 
you go to one of the betting sites, predicted.org, okay? And uh, she's the runaway right now. So it would be an upset for anybody else. She's about 85 cents on the dollar. Uh, Gavin Newsom, he came out and endorsed Harris. So I don't know if that takes him out of the running completely. You got Mayor Pete out there. I don't think he's going to be the guy. He was on Bill Maher on Friday night. And I enjoy that show. I do. Um, and he was out there still touting that Biden was the guy. Uh, nonetheless, he's, he's he makes some great points, man. I don't think he's going to be the guy at the top. He's one penny on the dollar right now. Michelle Obama, I'm not sure if that's a realistic one or if that's just where betting markets are throwing a flyer out there. Pretty interesting that Obama and Clinton are the two that are below Harris. Uh, let's hope to God it's not Hillary. And... Um, yeah, but she's so she's the top betting dog right now. Okay, who's she going to pick as VP? That's one of the interesting sagas that goes on in there as as the ticket unfolds, for sure. And then you go to the presidential election, which is going to be the more important one, of course, and the matchup. And you still got Trump pretty much at sixty. Now he was above there right after the assassination attempt. Oh come on, do I have to log in? I think I do to see the. Do I have to? Log in to see the no there. That's what I wanted to see. And I can log in. I've used the site. But you can see a dip coming. This is the seven day. All right. He was all the way up to 70 cents. He's now back to 60. And you've seen Kamala spike up to 40. Now you put it on the 30 day. And, you know, he was up to 70. He's back to 60. She's up to 40. We're just talking about statistics and odds right now, folks. Okay, that's where the betting odds are. That's where they are. You know what I found so interesting, right? And look at the volume on this in terms of people coming in for sure. Um, I was saying this yesterday even to my dad and some of my friends. It's remarkable that Trump even debated Biden, if you think about it, right? He wasn't afraid to in his in his props, and it was the right thing to do, okay? So props to him for debating him. They Candidates should debate. But – Trump had this in the bag, man. And it is interesting when you look at it. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, okay? But if he had not debated to Biden, if he had not debated Biden, that probably is not an event that occurs. And maybe he doesn't have as not as much pressure and doesn't step down. And I don't think that Biden had any chance of winning. Um, so it is interesting how that all unfolds. Nonetheless, that's what the betting markets are saying. About a sixty forty right now, and boy. You know, you think nobody knows what's going to happen, folks. OK, nobody, because, you know, when she ran in 2020. She did horrible. So how is she going to do at the top of the ticket this time? I don't know. You throw the other angle in things. People have been clamoring for anybody but two old guys, two old white guys in their 80s for a long time, especially two old guys, especially just two old people. OK, um, going to be interesting to see how the electorate reacts to that to somebody else besides Biden and Trump, who've basically been the two people running since when? Since almost 2016. You think about it. Trump won in 2016. OK, so Hillary's out in 2016. That's eight years ago. Trump has been at the top of the Republican ticket. The moment that Hillary lost in 2016, you could say that there was a lot of pressure on maybe Biden to come back. So for eight years, it's kind of been maybe it's going to be Trump versus Biden. Eight years. And now that's not the case. Nobody knows what's going to happen, man. Never had an election like this before. Um, so be careful in terms of making some solid bets where the other. We'll see what happens. SPs positive to kick things off. We've got a lot to talk about. We'll talk some equities. We'll talk some airlines. We'll talk some crowd strike when we get back. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now up 34.5 points. You got the NASDAQ up 224. Quite a run to kick things off on the Monday session as we await the opening bell in about 11 minutes. We take a look at some of the airlines. So CrowdStrike brings down the entire world last week. And we're still seeing the effects this morning. You jump over to some of the headlines. Delta cancels hundreds of more flights in a struggle to recover from the Microsoft outage. How about it, man? Canceled more than 4,600 flights from Friday through Sunday. 5,000 flights almost. you got to be kidding me, man. Um, they canceled another 550 flights as of early Monday. 15% of the mainline operation. The disruption, yeah, Um Pretty indicative of just how fragile things are of one little line of code from one company like CrowdStrike brings down Microsoft and brings down every system across the globe. I think it's 70 percent of the computers across the globe operate on 
Microsoft system. Absolutely remarkable. United had elevated flight disruptions on Sunday with 9% of its schedule canceled. 260 flights out there. Yeah, and Delta has a number of Microsoft tools that were impacted in the outage. In particular, one of our crew tracking related tools was affected and unable to effectively process the unprecedented number of changes triggered by the system shutdown. Pretty remarkable when you see the type of impact that you have out there. And there is CrowdStrike. You got CrowdStrike down another, what, 16 bucks, more than 5% today as those problems are persisting. You jump over to Microsoft shares, Microsoft. Don't worry about Microsoft. They're just fine. Check it out. Microsoft is flat from where we were as of Thursday's close. Remember, these problems took place Thursday overnight into Friday. And you're talking about from 437 um, for Friday. We're going to be up $3. The problems are still persisting. And, you know, CrowdStrike is supposed to pre prevent problems like this. And you see the vulnerabilities when everybody relies on one company like Microsoft. And listen, Microsoft is a company almost like none other right now. Check out Apple shares. They're going to be trading positive with the whole market with the NASDAQ 100 up more than 1% this morning. Apple trading at 226.85. You close at 224.31 over there. And yeah, um, I don't know how you solve that problem, okay? But it's only going to get worse in terms of this should just be a wake up. The problem was fixed almost instantaneously. It wasn't a hacker. It was one line of code. They had a fix for it almost instantly. And you can see that that problem was Thursday night into Friday. We're now on Monday, and we still have cancellations. Just imagine if there's ever a worse problem. And, folks, it's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. Okay? You run enough probabilities. You run enough sims. Okay? You want to go out 5 years, 10 years, 15, 20 just be aware these things are going to happen. And as I was saying on Friday's program, right, whatever it is, I mean, you know, this impacted banks, it inca impacted airlines. Um, what happens if you go a couple days, you can't access your bank account, you, you need cash to go get gas for your car. Might make sense to have a little bit of cash stored just in case um, and not doomsday style. Everything will be OK in the long run, but there are going to be disruptions. This is just one indication of what's coming down the line as we all rely on those systems as companies rely on AI much more so you can't get things done over paper and pen anymore the computers are getting it done and yeah they got some real issues out there we got a request in the den of course we do to take a look at DJT uh, spike up on that news spike down what I will say is folks I mean it's the ultimate meme stock going on right now and I just gave you the probability odds the probability, I think it's uh, all risk, very little reward in there. You got a 60-40 chance Trump is in there. And so what's the probability that that doesn't happen? Boy, there are many probabilities that we all can't see right now on this equity. So be careful buying that thing because it is not supported by the fundamentals in any way whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, buyer beware when you're talking about buying anything to do with President Trump right now. Since that request comes in, why not? Uh, okay, let's take a look at some of the other stories we got going on. I found this one interesting from the journal. Where are we? Yeah, here we go. A stock market rotation of historic proportions is taking shape. Now, this one's an interesting one, man, when you take a look at it. Few investors saw the shift coming, and many are puzzled by what is behind it. Okay. You can't deny some of these rotations. And boy, it would make sense that eventually some of the equities besides the Magnificent Seven determine what this market is going to do up or down one way or the other. The Russell 2000 and smaller stocks beat the S&P 500 over the seven days through Wednesday by the large period of length in data going back to 1986. Folks, that's 38 years. There has not been a seven-day period in the last 38 years that you've had the Russell beat the S&P like that pay attention when you see something like that going on that's what caught my mind about rotations rightfully so and Maybe he'll talk about it on that webinar. I'm not sure. You should sign up for the opening call and check it out, folks. Still comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee right on the front page of TFNN. You can still get your Tiger dollars out there. But, yeah, you talk about 
an anomaly, right? The Russell 1000 value index, meanwhile, notched its biggest lead over the growth stock counterpart since April of 2001 after the dot-com bubble burst. Okay, so you got something going on here. Now, why? Why is this going on? Well, that's a different story. Few investors saw the shift coming, as they, is how they put it. Many are puzzled by what's behind it. Is it, because you got so many different things going on right now, right? Is it the interest rates cuts come September? Extraordinary period of time with interest rates high from the Fed. We are also three and a half months out from a presidential election. A week ago, President Trump was at 70% odds, which is almost just, I mean, those probabilities, folks, are very high coming into a presidential election. So was it the Trump trade coming into things, right? The Russell performed very well when he came, came into office last time around, okay? Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. We're going to finish this up when we get back from the break because there's a couple more in that, um, numbers that I want to talk about. We got some earnings coming out this week they talk about. We'll finish up when we get back. We're coming back for the opening bell. We still got a lot to talk about, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back after the break. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. You got markets open. You got the S&Ps right now up by 35 points, trading at 5588. And you see, even on a daily basis, that was quite a three days we got from the highs of 5700 and change. You drive down to Friday's close about 5542. We're catching a little bit of a lift right now. NASDAQ 100, you're up by about 200 points, 19,915, Dow up 127. And the Russell up by about five tenths percent. So keeping in what we were talking about here, some of the rotation that potentially is going on right now, you know, they talk about a number of different things that could be happening, right? You first talk about the Magnificent Seven, just been on an absolute tear, okay? Then you look at what they have in this article, which is kind of cool. Come on, where are we? Well, they talk about the rates, of course, okay? When the Fed began its rate increase campaign in March of 2022, the 10-year was around 2.2%. Can you believe that? We're at 4.2 right now about, okay? We're at 2.2%. Remarkable. The Fed raised rates in October 2023. It topped 5% for the first time in 16 years. We're sitting right now at about 4.22, all right? As of Friday, it was 4.238, I guess. We're sitting at about 4.22. You take a look at the index performance this year. I mean, the Russell was flat until the middle of July. You, yeah, you can still make the case that it's dramatically underperforming the S&P 500, but look at the run that it had, and that's why it's a seven-day period like we've never seen before in terms of going back to 1986. Now, what's interesting is we get some of the tech earnings this week. We get Google. We get Tesla. Some of the companies, you get Chipotle Mexican Grill, just cherry picking some of the other equities that were out this week. OK, you get 300 companies in the Russell 2000 are reporting this week. OK, the week after this next week, we get Microsoft, Meta, Apple and Amazon. So we're coming into the main event, man. Again, this week, Google and Alphabet. Next week, Microsoft, Meta, Apple and Amazon all coming out with their earnings. Yeah, it's going to be an important one, to say the least. Now. These companies' earnings have been driving this market, and that's why I've been talking about, you know, if the Fed, have you been hearing the conversation start shifting of, oh, man, it's a weakening economy? What happens if the Fed cuts every single meeting right going from here on out for like six or seven meetings? What happens if we need a 50 basis point cut all of a sudden because the weakening is so dramatic? Just remarkable how quickly that conversation shifts. That's not going to help this market, right? Everybody was, for the longest time, remember when people were looking for bad news was good news, right? You get bad news, the Fed's going to cut, that's going to be a good thing for the market. No, that's not the case anymore. Earnings, economic performance have been driving this market. If the news comes out and the data shows us that the economy is weakening, causing the Fed to need to cut, that's not going to be good for the market, okay? Now, Together, the Magnificent Seven, check this out, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. You could say Tesla's lucky still to be in that group because it ain't that magnificent. I mean, it's been on quite a run, but compared to the yearly performance of the other equities, nonetheless, reported a 52% increase in profits in the first quarter of this year. OK, for the first quarter, compared with a decline of 8.7 percent by the remaining 493 companies. You hear that? The Magnificent Seven reported a 52 percent increase in profits for the first quarter. The other 493 companies declined by 8.7 percent. Amazing. Analysts expect this report to show a 28 percent jump in earnings for the second quarter, while profits for the other S&P 500 to slip 1%. So that's a slowdown, but you're still going to see those seven report a 28% jump in earnings, and you're going to see the other 490 slip 1%. Russell 2000 companies, meanwhile, are expected to report an 18% rise in second quarter profits, snapping a five-quarter streak of year-over-year -year declines. So the rotation is happening because of the potential numbers coming down the line. I mean, check that out, right? Um, index and share price performance since July 10th. The Russell up by what, 7%? And look at the tech stocks. Look at NVIDIA, down 12. Meta, down 10. Amazon, down 8. That's even with Prime Day in there. Google, down about 7. Microsoft, down 6. Apple, down 3. And the Russell up by 7. But, you know, 
I wanted to get to those numbers because not a lot of people, I would say, are aware of those numbers. You have the 493 companies in the S&P 500 expected to decline by 1% on their earnings, and you have the 2,000 Russell 2000 companies expected to report a nearly 18% rise in second quarter profits. So it's not all about just a you know seasonal rotation. There is wind at the sails of the back of the Russell 2000, and it's driven by earnings. Smaller companies tend to be more vulnerable vulnerable than big ones to interest rates. Yeah, 30% of the debt in the Russell 2000 is floating compared to 6% of the S&P 500. I'm going to post this article in the den because it's a great one, man, especially when you talk about that data hasn't happened since 1986. I mean, are you aware of this? Right. Thirty percent of the debt in the Russell is floating. I don't know why they have that going on when you could have locked in some of those numbers at historic lows. Nonetheless, I mean, there's decisions and there's variables that, that make that the, the, the reason that they need to make that choice. Six percent of the S&P 500 debt is floating. Thirty percent of the debt in the Russell is floating. Well, geez. That's going to matter when the Fed needs to start cutting dramatically. OK, maybe bad news is good news for the Russell. But bad news is not good news for the S&P 500 just because of this line alone, right? That's a dramatic difference in those two debt factors. Those factor factors contributed to the investors' lack of enthusiasm for the group as the Fed kept rates high. Um, yeah, a big one of that for sure. So keep that one in mind. Keep those numbers in line. And I will post this article in the den towards the end of the program. But remember that one. Pretty interesting, nonetheless. And the Russell today up by about eight tenths percent. Boy, we got a market, man. S and P's up by eight tenths. Nasdaq up by one point one, and Dow up by three tenths. All of this basically having nothing to do with the election right now, too, folks. I mean, it is so early that nobody knows what's going to happen when you have an election like none other that is about to occur in a three and a half hour, three and a half hour, three and a half month period. Pretty remarkable. All right, let's see what else we got going on. What other articles? Let's check back in. Those odds doing anything? They move, folks. They do. And if you're trying to make calculations on these, I would keep your eye on the betting markets because the money don't lie, as they say. If you're really trying to make some trades off of the Trump trade, etc., um, I would keep your eye on it. Yeah, you get the Secret Service director. She's going to be testifying in front of Congress today. I've said my piece there, man. I don't know how. That is defensible in terms of what occurred. I mean, that interview that she did a week ago talking about we didn't put anybody on the roof because it was a sloped roof. Folks, I think that I, you know, what was that roof sloped? Eight degrees, 15 degrees. I mean, the gunman was shot dead and he didn't roll off the roof. And somehow you couldn't put Secret Service agents on that roof. And, you know, it keeps coming down the line in terms of this one. Says it denied some of the Trump requests for more security. You had the story out there that they were already worried that there were threats from Iran versus Trump. Um, absolute abysmal personal failure. It always starts at the top. She should go. And uh, she's going to take some heat. Justifiably so today. It'll be interesting to see what comes out. All right. When we come back, Verizon. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. S&P is continuing to climb up by 46 points. We're at 5,600 on the dot right now. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 245, 19,959. Dow up 93 points and the Russell up by 11 right now. We jump over, as I mentioned, Verizon out with their numbers. It's a tough one, down by 5.5%. Now, this has been on quite a run, man. Verizon, right? A year ago, well, a little bit less. You're at 30 bucks. A company like Verizon could call it a dividend equity, right? Drives up $13 to $43.42. You make a double top, you almost get back up to that level. And then, yeah, we get some tough earnings for Verizon out with their numbers. Verizon misses quarter quarterly revenue estimates on slow phone upgrades. Well, guess what? That could be changing, though, as we got the iPhone pumping out, man. Uh, second quarter revenue, 32.8. They were looking for 33.06. Analysts had said Verizon is reeling from a historically low number of people upgrading their phones, although that could change. When Apple releases its latest iPhone with AI features later this year, if that's what it's hinging on, then they're going to get a boost because this is a real upgrade cycle. What do they call it? A super cycle, right? You saw the lift that Apple got for that same reason. I'm waiting myself. I'm probably going to upgrade. I think I have a 12 plus right now. I got it before Tommy was born. I probably got it about four years ago because I had it before he was born. He was born in February 21, so I've had it almost four years right now, and it's about time with the super cycle coming down the line. I'm sure there's going to be many others, and it is pretty remarkable that you have a real reason to upgrade that phone for the first time in a while versus just a camera and maybe a battery or something like that. Nonetheless, where'd you go? You're at the bottom of this range for Verizon that bottom of that range, that bar from the last earnings cycle, right? About $38. Be careful. You go below that level, man. And there is nothing stopping this equity below about $34. Yeah. You got to love channel lines, right? Look at that channel line. What do you do? The moment you break out of that channel line, boom, that was the buy right there. It's pretty remarkable. And you trade up. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing in the way of this thing. If you get below that $38, yeah. About 30, what's the low there? 38.56 for their last earnings. And 38 was where the, we were at the beginning of the year. Basically two quarters ago earnings almost. And yeah, it was a straight sh shot right down to those lows. Pretty remarkable. All right. Other companies we got coming out with the numbers. I mentioned it as we got a decent portion. We got some of the tech companies. You got GM out tomorrow. Coca-Cola, Comcast, UPS. 
Google, Tesla. Let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla up 5%. This one's an interesting one. They catch a bid right on the open, man. Check that out. From 244 up to 250, you were at 236 as of Friday. So Tesla is out with their numbers on Tuesday. We get Mattel on Tuesday. You get AT&T on Wednesday. Ford, IBM, Chipotle Mexican Grill. They've been on a tear. Yeah, quite a little retracement. Where are we Fibonacci-wise on this thing? All right, almost right back to the 50%. You made it all the way to 69.26. You're trading at 53.97 right now. You know, their brand's taking a hit. I love Chipotle, but boy, it is super expensive, and the consistency of what you're getting is lackluster. I'll tell you, after my surgery in April, I was ordering some Uber Eats for a period of time. I ordered it one time off of Uber Eats. I ordered Chipotle. And I got a burrito and some chips and guac, and they forget the chips and guac. I was like, how, how are you a company like Chipotle, and you don't for, remember chips and guac? Ruins the whole entire meal. But it's those types of things that matter in terms of brand. Um, that would not have happened in the early days, where somehow you don't remember chips and guac when somebody orders it, and you're paying like five, six bucks for just chips and guac or something like that. Nonetheless, I'll end my rant. <laughs> All right, we take a look at Disney. So, Disney... Quite the pullback here, man. You're down by 1.4% on a positive market. This thing been struggling. A little bit worrisome that you're breaking through that 618. That is worrisome for sure. And what do we got? We got this gap back here in November of last year, which is their earnings from a year ago. And, yeah, it's a tough one, man. You're off by 1.3%. It seems like no matter what happens. But the one thing to keep your eye on is you do have the new Deadpool and Wolverine movie that comes out on Friday. That's going to be a blockbuster, man. And, you know, I don't know if that's going to move the move the line on Disney shares. It should matter, but this is been a struggle. And you're trading lower when everything out there seems to be trading higher today. And even on a positive day in the market, you got Disney down by 1.4% today, trading at 94.38. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking at an entry, it depends where you're looking. You're looking at long term, you could always buy a partial position, man. You know, you're looking short term, not sure the risk reward is there right now. Where maybe you're coming back down to this 8860 level. And if you're really looking for a sweet buy point, I'd say about 85 bucks is in there with filling that for a shorter term risk reward. As it had been basing, not what you want to see when it makes that base in around 96 on a day like today, you trade lower on Disney shares. Not what you want to see for sure. All right, what else we got going on in this market? Yeah, you got Ryanair Airlines. They're down 14% as the budget airline reports a 46% fall in quarterly profit and sees lower fares coming at you. Not, not what the market likes to see. Yeah, down double digits. European Airlines followed suit. EasyJet's off 6%. So you got European Airlines suffering today ahead of that, excuse me, on the heels of that. All right, this one's interesting. We talked a little bit of World Series of Poker uh, main event. So the story comes out, right? Check this out. So I follow this story, and it is an interesting one, okay? And so here's your winner, Jonathan Tamayo. And this is just a lesson in, in always making sure that when there's money involved, folks, people are going to do anything they can to get their money. And this guy did not cheat okay that's not what this story is about but poker has become a sophisticated complex game of solvers okay uh i used to play it online all the time i was using complex software completely legal and in the rules where you could track people's moves i understood how often people were playing every hand how often they were seeing flops etc it gave me tendencies on those players etc right so if you check out this, right, this is Jonathan Tamayo. He won the World Series of Poker Main Event. He won $10 million, okay? Now, the rules are that you are not allowed to use solvers in games because they got solvers on your phone now. They got everything. They can tell you if you're playing a nine-handed game and you're on the button, here's the range of hands you should be opening. They, they give you indications because poker is pretty much a solved game by computers at this point, okay? Now... What I'll tell you is it's only a solved game if you're playing against somebody who's playing by the book. Most people are not playing by the book, so actually the most profitable way to play 
is something that may actually be not the game theory optimal way to play. The most profitable way to play actually may be an exploitable version of poker, but the people you're playing against are not playing proper optimized game themselves. Therefore, the most profitable way to play is to play in a manner that exploits their gameplay even though the way you play may be exploitable in the long term because they're not going to play in a way that exploits your game. Did they explain that one? All right. We'll finish this up when I get back, but it's an interesting conversation because it has to do with probabilities and it has to do with just always protecting yourself and being aware. When there's money involved, man, just like in trading, okay, people are going to seek every edge they can. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 48.5 points, 56.02, quite a charge higher, up by 9 tenths percent. Check out the NASDAQ 100, man. You are up by 1.5 percent. We check in on some of those magnificent seven Amazon. Actually dips a little bit lower on the open. We're up by 6 tenths percent. You jump over to Apple shares this morning, up by 1.1 percent. Google out with their numbers this week, catching a charge up by 2.2 percent. You jump over to Meta shares, up by almost 3 percent this morning. You jump over to Tesla, up by 5 percent. And you jump to NVIDIA shares, up by 4.2 percent. You talk about it, man. Equity is getting a lift. Now, don't forget, folks, we have extended the Tiger Dollar sale through the end of this month because we get some cool stuff coming up. 
even through the end of this month. So we thought, hey, we're going to extend it. We got Basil Chapman coming up tomorrow night. Okay, he's doing a 90 minute webinar. He's up next, folks. Sectors and stock stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. You sign up for the opening call. You get 30 days of his outstanding newsletter. He puts out videos out over the weekend, folks. You gain access to that. An opening call out this morning. You gain access to the archive webinars he has. You gain access to his 90 minute live webinar going on tomorrow night sectors and stocks to focus on in the next phase of the market cycle go over there get your tiger dollars first sign up for basil you got larry coming up this friday he's excited for that i was talking to him over the weekend um, with his live trading sessions and we got some more stuff coming out that we'll be announcing as well so tiger dollars through the end of the month don't miss that folks you can get a 20 30 or even a 40 percent bonus on your purchase pretty cool now just going back to the poker story as we wrap it up the story here is here's the picture okay so he had his rail using solvers. You can see the picture here. And this is a debatable one. You're really not supposed to be using solvers, all right? It's not something where he should be disqualified and banned from the tournament. It's this gray area currently going on. And what they were doing is they were running simulations, okay? But the moral of the story is, all right, be careful when you're with your money. And if you're playing, you're in the market, right? The Bill Huangs, everything, everybody's always seeking an edge. And just be aware of that because this story's going to come out. They're probably going to make some rule changes next year. Um, they had his friends were sitting on the rail with the laptop running sims. He's running over and getting advice on 